going on at this moment in Ukraine. Reporter Joseph Lindsley is there. Joseph, uh, where are you exactly? Set uh, set the stage for us for uh, your report. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, I'm speaking to you from Lviv, uh, where I have been uh, for two years. I got stuck here sort of when the pandemic began, and I decided to stay, and I'm very happy that I'm here now to report the realities of the situation. Uh, what uh, What is going on around you at the moment? And, you know, I'll say in Lviv, for example, a few hours ago, I, even though it is technically martial law, I went for a run. Uh, people are going to work. Uh, uh, people are preparing, but very calmly. Uh, people, there's still laughter and joking. Uh, so there's, there's a calmness here, but a, sort of an underlying fear and uncertainty. Uh, I have connections and friends and colleagues in Kharkiv, which is 20 miles from Russia. And uh, just recently I heard from a friend who said it's very noisy and very scary. And everyone is huddled in the house together while there is all kinds of activity outside. So and it's, it's, it's very difficult to get actual good information on what's happening uh, on sort of Ukrainian telegram. There's all kinds of channels where citizens rapidly share information. So I just heard that that, I, that 15 Russian tanks were destroyed by Ukrainians. But we also hear, uh, and I think I think CNN is just reporting that an airport outside of Kiev has Russian troops. So it's very confusing. Uh, in fact, we we had a very good map made by Ukrainian IT people that showed where the explosions were and where the Russians were moving, and someone hacked it. So we're kind of flying a little blind here for the past hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's. So I, I know all that sounds kind of crazy, and that is a little bit of the, it's crazy, but then the, the people are calm, and, and which really, I, I'm, I'm amazed by the calmness I've encountered so far. Yeah, I'm amazed to hear you reporting that, too, because what we're hearing uh, is uh, there are lines at the banks, and people are going into bomb shelters, and people are trying to get out of the country, but they can't. But you describe some degree of normalcy, which is hard to believe. Yeah, I mean, sh- th- there are lines, there are, there are queues for the ga- uh, gas stations and the banks, uh, but they're they're peaceful, and you know, the, the, no, uh, no, you know, everyone is sort of calm, and uh, and uh, especially here in the West. Um, uh, so yeah, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. I mean, it, it's not totally normal, of course, uh, not by any stretch, but but there is a there's a resolve, and I think this is one of the questions that we have to ask is you know when. Putin gave that bizarre speech last night calling for the denazification of Ukraine. Totally absurd and unexpected. Uh, you know, what, what is he really after? Because this would not be an easy country to govern. Uh, because if it, no one want, if it, in 2014, they had a revolution. They wanted to be free. They kicked out the pro-Putin regime. Uh, that's their pride. That's their dignity. Uh, I don't see this. Uh, I, I don't see. I don't really can't imagine what his plan would be. Uh I don't know. I mean, we, we've heard reports the past weeks that uh, Russian operatives were even here in the city of Lviv, and I think we have some good evidence for that, and that they were preparing you know, to find the leading uh, Ukrainians, Americans, and others who they wanted to put on a hit list to, to prevent a resistance. But I think the resistance would have to include, they would have to put everyone on the hit list, is, is the sense I get from everyone I know, and I've, uh, everyone I've met in this country these past two years. Joseph, there were reports that uh, gun sales were uh, booming there, if you'll pardon that expression, in, mm-hmm. in, in Ukraine. Are, are Ukrainians, civilians, prepared to fight, as, as some have uh, reported? Absolutely. I think they're, they're emotionally prepared, mentally prepared and, and physically prepared. And, and especially in the past weeks, uh, for example, uh, with my journalistic colleagues here, we had a story about uh, some girls that work in an IT company together. And a few days uh, after work, every week, they would go train with knives and guns. That was fairly common. Um, and, and so I, and, and I think we need some historical context to realize in 2014, a few, like, about, beginning about a month after the Euromaidan revolution, when the regime fled to Russia, uh, Ukraine, its military was in tatters, uh, and, and, was, and that's when Putin made his, that's when he invaded Crimea, and he invaded the Donbass, uh, and then he tried to take the cities of Odessa, Kharkiv, and Dnipro. And for a couple of days, it was very tenuous that those cities would fall into Russian hands, cities of a million people. But the citizens defended those cities. Um, now, it wasn't a, a big on, you know, onslaught of attack like we see now with all this machinery. So there have been some differences. But, but we do have to see that Ukrainian, when Ukraine was much weaker eight years ago, uh, they defended their cities. And so I, I think and it is, Putin is a master crafter of narratives. I think in some sense we have, 
maybe we've all been swept up into it a bit. Uh, and that's why Ukrainians have been calm these past weeks and months. Um, it, it, it can be hard to be calm being surrounded by, you know, we don't know where they're, which way they're going to come at us. In fact, there's a report now that they're making movements in the, in the, in the, in the Black Sea and possibly have hit a Turkish ship. So it's, it, it is a little bit of madness. Um, mm-hmm. but, but I think we also have to take a step back and realize the strength of Ukrainians and, and what could Putin's end game possibly be. It seems like uh, it's Putin's revenge against not only Ukraine, but the, the entire West. Does it seem that way to you? Uh, you know, I, I, I think that is part of it. Um, we, I think uh, and I, it's been, you know, I've been obviously just focused here in Ukraine, but I, I hope people are looking toward Beijing because they've had Russia and Beijing have had such a strong alliance. I hope we're paying attention to that. Um, you know, in some ways, you know, when Beijing wiped out Hong Kong's liberties, uh, that happened. That was to me, that was really unexpected that that was even possible. And it did happen. Um, now it seems that, that it's, you know, Ukraine is facing a similar type of thing. But the major difference this is a country of 40 million people. It's a vast country. People know how to hide. They know how to survive. Um, and, and I think that but I think that the similar thing is that Putin is threatened by your, Ukraine's Euromaidan revolution. When the people said we want to be free. In all my travels, this is probably the country with the most free speech I've ever visited. Hmm. Um, and if, if and a lot of the population speaks Russian, although there's many people are now refusing to speak Russian uh, anymore. But if, if Russian speaking people can be free, then why can't Russia? And so I do think that the idea of a free and prosperous Ukraine, and it was making it has been making great strides toward that, is a threat to Putin's regime. And uh, it's nighttime there now, isn't it? What time is it there, Joseph? Uh, no, it's it's the afternoon. Uh, it's still sunny. It's uh, four four thirty p.m. And so, uh, how how do you get around? Are you concerned with your your travel? Yeah, I mean, I, as I said, I went I went running today just to get a sense of the city, um, and you know, I'm a little bit more alert uh, than usual. But uh, I, I, you know, I know, uh, and this, even though it's a city of seven hundred thousand people in your neighborhood, you know everyone, and and there. That's this network of Ukrainian civil society. I heard so many stories about it. And in the past few days, I've really seen it come to life. It's a machine. And people know how to protect each other and care for each other across all different industries and interests. Uh, so in a sense, we feel very safe here, although we realize that, you know, some threat could come from outside. And, and again, uh, your, your location right now? My, my location is in, is in Lviv, uh, Ukraine, which is about 70 miles from the Polish border. Uh, the many of the embassies uh, relo- relocated here from Kiev several weeks ago. Uh, although now uh, it seems that the U.S. embassy is in Poland. How far are you from the capital? Uh, the capital is uh, it would be uh, by train. It's a it's a seven hour overnight train, um, and I, I can't think of the miles at the moment. Uh, it's like se- several hundred miles from the capital. Mm-hmm. And, and so, uh, do you hear any bombs going off? Any artillery from from your location? No, we, we did have a, a sort of air raid sirens uh, this morning, uh, and it seems that there might have been some drone attempted drone strikes at the airport here, but I, I, it does not seem they've been successful. Uh, and other than that, it's been it's been calm. You can, I, this morning, even when the rest of the country was in turmoil, I heard the birds chirping here. So <laughs> this is much calmer. Um, it was very surprising that uh, everyone has always thought that the West would be sort of protected and maybe even a buffer zone, that, that Europe would insist that, that there was some buffer zone at the very least, even if they won't defend Ukraine. Um, but very surprisingly, the city of Ivano-Frankivsk, which is only 115 kilometers from Lviv, it's also in the western mountain region, uh, w- w- was hit uh, this morning. And that was a big surprise. That very bold move that, that Putin seems to want the entire country. And he wants, no, he wants to erase it as a culture and identity. Journalist Joseph uh, Lindsley, uh, we really appreciate uh, you taking the time to tell us what's going on there. Uh, and um, hopefully uh, you can uh, stay safe and keep telling everybody else what is really going on in Ukraine, Joseph. Appreciate the, well, uh, the insight today. Thanks for paying attention to this as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for introducing Ukraine on your social media pages. That's very important that much more people can get more information about the situation here and how everybody can help Ukraine to stay stronger and to save all the world.
Ебать, 